Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Amar Tech Stuff. So guys, in this video, we're going to focus on top 10 STP, that is Primary Protocol Interview Question and Answers. So let's start with question number one. Uh, question number one says, what is Spanetry Protocol, that is STP, and the use of STP? So STP, that is Spanetry Protocol, guys, it's a layer two protocol, which is an open standard protocol. Uh, since it's a layer two protocol, so it is, but obviously running on these switches. And it is defined under IEEE 802.1D. So whenever this question is asked, you can mention this particular point. And you can also mention this point number two, which I've mentioned over here, that on all Cisco switches, it is enabled. That is, it is running by default. You don't have to give any extra command to actually run STP on Cisco switches. By default, it is running. Uh, then the question comes, what is the use of STP? So to answer this question, be very uh, precise, give a precise answer that in layer two network, whenever you go for redundancy, layer two loops can be created and to avoid such layer two loops, STP is used. STP comes into picture to avoid such layer two loops. Uh, question number two, I have mentioned over here that what is the operation of STP that or how the STP exactly works. So this is a very important question because uh, from perspective of STP interview, this is the most important question because once you answer this question, you have passed the interview for STP. It's a very important uh, question as I told. So whenever you are trying to answer this question, uh, as I mentioned here in the very first point, that uh, take a help of an topology and uh, first explain how layer two loops may happen. So I can explain you how layer two loops can happen. So I can take a very simple topology of three switches. Okay. And uh, let's say this is switch one, this is switch two, and this is switch three. Uh, a host, uh, let's say a host is connected over here. Now, if this host will send a broadcast frame to this switch one, what switch one will do? Switch one will make multiple copies of that broadcast frame and it will forward it to all the ports except the port from where it received. So it will forward it to the port which is getting connected to switch two and also to switch three then switch two once it receives the broadcast frame it will also make multiple copies and send it to all the ports so it will also going to send it to the port which is getting connected to switch three then switch three will forward that broadcast frame to switch one switch one will again forward that broadcast frame to switch two uh, so this is i'm talking about in one direction again this is going to happen in this other direction also so because of this, a loop will be created. Now, such loops which are created in this layer two network are known as layer two loops, switching loops or bridging loops. So what STP do, do to avoid this uh, such kind of loop is it will elect a root bridge. Out of all the switches, it will elect a root bridge and all the switches, other switches will be elected as non-root bridge. Now, I'll again draw this diagram this three switches and uh, let's say this is switch one, switch two and switch three. And let's say switch one gets elected as root bridge. So switch two will be elected as non-root bridge and uh, switch three will be elected as non-root bridge. Now all this uh, switches, whether it be a root bridge or whether it be a non-root bridge, all these switches will exchange hellos with each other. Hellos are nothing but this BPDUs with each other, okay? Every two seconds. Now, this non-root bridge will also receive the uh, BPDUs from root bridge. Now, for example, like let's say uh, switch two, which is a non-root bridge. It will receive BPDU from root bridge from here, from this path, let's say this is path one, and also from this path, path two, right? So, the non-root bridge, when it 
receives BPDUs from root bridge from multiple paths or on multiple ports, it will block all the ports except the one port through which the cost is less. Now let's say the cost to this particular uh, path or this particular port is less. So this port won't be getting blocked. So this port will be getting blocked. So this thing will be getting blocked. Okay. So in this way, uh, STP actually eliminates the loop in the network by blocking the port on the loop. Okay, so this is how STP works. So we can explain this particular question point to point. Now, I was talking about cost. So the interview may you ask you two kind of questions once you answer this question. One is this question number four and question number three. I'll come to question number three first of all. That what is spanning tree path cost? I told you about the cost. Okay, so the path which is having a lower cost that part won't be blocked. So in sparring tree guys always remember the golden rule that lower is better. Okay, lower is superior in STB. So the, the part with the lower cost won't be blocked. Okay, so the cost depends upon bandwidth and the cost is inversely proportional to bandwidth. So higher the bandwidth, lower the cost, which is better. Okay, so if you have the bandwidth of the link as uh, a 10 Mbps, the cost is going to be 100. If the bandwidth is 100 Mbps, the cost is going to be 19. If the bandwidth is 1 Gbps, the cost is going to be 4. And if the bandwidth is 10 Mbps, uh, 10 Gbps, the cost is going to be 2. Okay, so it is inversely proportional. You can see here the bandwidth is increasing and the cost is decreasing. Okay, so it is inversely proportional to each other. You can also remember these values because most of time interview may ask that, okay, tell me what is the cost for a link with this 100 Mbps? The cost is 19. So you can just remember this stuff, not a very difficult stuff to remember. Uh, let's move on to question number four. That I told you that a root bridge will be elected of just three switches. We took these three switches, right? And I told you that, you know, let's say, uh, this switch, switch one becomes the root bridge. Now, who decides who is root bridge? Now, this election goes completely depends upon the bridge ID. Now, let's say uh, this root bridge, that is switch one, is having the lowest bridge ID. PID, I'll say. So, it is having the lowest bridge ID. It is, this is, for example, uh, the lowest bridge ID. So this is elected as root bridge. Now this bridge ID depends upon two things. Uh, this bridge ID is combination of bridge priority, which is of two bytes and default value is 32768 and bridge MAC address, which is of six bytes. So bridge ID depends upon this two things. So the bridge ID is of two plus six, which is of eight bytes. So always remember the election of the root bridge depends upon the bridge ID. The switch with the lowest bridge ID will be elected as the root bridge. Now, question number five, I've made three questions out of this, 5A, 5B and 5C. Uh, I've made a three question, scenario based question because I've seen recently that, you know, some scenario based questions are often asked for STP also. So I've taken a very simple scenarios, but I can see these are the key scenarios for which the uh, candidate may get confused and you, the candidate may land up uh, answering a wrong question, a wrong answer to that question. So the scenario based question. So let's uh, try to figure it out because in scenario based questions, you can have a lot of possibilities. So I've tried to pick out the key possibilities. Now, Question number 5a, in this scenario, if switch 1 is the root bridge and all the ports of the switches have the bandwidth of 100 Mbps, then which port will be blocked? Switch 2, fast Ethernet 0 slash 2 or switch 3 is fast Ethernet 0 slash 2. Now, the question is very simple, you know, that switch 1, they have specified it has a root bridge. We have always already written this is a root bridge and all these links are having the uh, bandwidth of 100 Mbps. Okay, now 
Once this link is having any link is having a bandwidth of 100 Mbps, that means the cost is 19. The cost for this link is also 19, and the cost for this link is also 19. Now, which port will be blocked? Switch two is faster than zero slash two, or switch three is faster than zero slash two. Now here, root bridge is switch one, so this will be non-root bridge. Right, so switch 2 will be non root bridge, also switch 3 will be non root bridge. Switch 2 is going to receive BPDU from this path, that is path 1, and also from this path. This is path 2. Now, if you see here for switch 2, two paths are there. Path 1 cost is 19, whereas path 2, the cost will be 19 plus 19, that is 38. So this is the lesser cost. So this is going to win. So this is not going to get blocked. So this path is going to get blocked. Again, in the case of switch three also, this path is not going to get blocked. This path is going to get blocked. That means this link is going to get blocked. Now this link, that is the link which is connecting switch two and switch three is going to get blocked. Now who is going to block it? Switch 2 is going to block its port or switch 3 is going to block its port or both are going to block the port. This is the question. The question can go like this. Mostly candidates do answer that both are going to block their ports. No, this answer is wrong. Switch Either switch 2 will block its port that is faster than 0 slash 2 or switch 3 will block faster than 0 slash 2. Now the one who is having lower bridge ID will not block. Now, for example, switch 2 is having a lower bridge ID as compared to uh, switch 3. Then switch 2 is not going to block faster than 0 slash 2. Switch 2, or oh, sorry, switch 3 will block its port that is faster than 0 slash 2. Okay. Considering, taking into consideration that switch 2 is having a lower bridge ID, it will not block its port as comparison to the switch 3's bridge ID. Okay. So switch 3 uh, bridge ID is higher as compared to switch 2. So it will block its port. Simple. You can answer either way. Okay. Question number 5B. Uh, in the scenario of switch 1 is a root bridge and all the ports of the switches have the bandwidth of 100 Mbps. Then on switch 4, which port will be blocked? Now here also switch 4. This is a root bridge. First of all, let me take it as a root bridge. Uh, the cost is... 19 because the links are 100 Mbps. Now, this switch 4, which is a non root bridge, is going to receive BPDUs from root bridge from this path and also from this path. Okay, so this is path number 1 and this is path number 2. For both this path, for path 1 and path 2, the cost is going to be 38. So the cost is going to be match. Okay, so that cost is not a tiebreaker over here. Now, which port is going to be blocked or which path is going to be blocked? Faster than a 0 slash 1 or faster than a 0 slash 2? Now, it depends upon the, uh, I will say the forwarding switch or the upstream switch. Now, for switch 4, to reach the root bridge, there are two upstream or I can say forwarding switches. Now, both these upstream switches are uh, switch 2 and switch 3. Now, for example, let's say switch 2 is having a lower bridge ID, then this path is not going to get blocked. This one is not going to get blocked. This path will be blocked and this port is going to get blocked. Okay. So again, it depends upon the upstream that is forwarding switch bridge ID. Question number 5C. Uh, in this scenario, if switch 1 is the root bridge, okay, so this is the root bridge and all the ports of the switches have the bandwidth of 100 Mbps. So it is 19, this is also 19, the cost is 19. Then on switch 2, which port will be blocked? Faster than 0 slash 8 will be blocked or faster than 0 slash 7 will be blocked? Now, mostly uh, people will say that, I'll tell you what answer people give. Uh, both the cost are same, okay. So it is a tie for the cost, okay. So the first thing is cost. 
so that is Thai. The second thing is uh, upstream uh, the forwarding switch bridge ID. Now here the forwarding switch bridge ID is the switch one, which is again a tie. Then the third thing is people do miss this point, that is upstream switch ports port ID. Now here the port ID by default for this port and this port is 120. It will not change it. So that is tie. Then the last point comes out to be the upstream switch port number. Again, lesser is better. So the upstream switch have two ports, fast Ethernet 0 slash 3 and fast Ethernet 0 slash 4. So this particular port is going to get blocked. Uh, many people will tend to answer that no, fast Ethernet 0 slash 7 is lesser than fast Ethernet 0 slash 8. So this is not going to block. No, guys, it does not depends upon the local switch. It all depends upon the upstream switch port number. The upstream switch port number, whichever is less, that path will be not blocked. So guys, do remember this thing. I've made a, a chart over here also, a list over here. This four points which we mentioned. So we can also refer this four points. Uh, let's move on to question number six because uh, this is going to be a lot of questions are remaining. So let's cover in it uh, part two. So we'll cover the rest of the questions in part two. So we'll continue in part two of this interview question and answers for STP. I do have more five question and answers which are again very important. So let's meet you in the next video for part two. Till then bye take care and if you really like this video guys please do like this video and share with your friends as well thank you